Shannon here from Double Exposure, and this is all about my journey so far in becoming a consistent person. So for much of my adult life so far, my schedule has changed pretty often. Whether that was because of my school schedule being different every semester, and I was in and out of school until last December, or working a part-time job where I had to open a yoga studio at 6 a.m., or from hopping from film gig to film gig where my hours would vary wildly, sometimes shooting until 2 a.m. and other times leaving the house to go shoot at 5 a.m. So really the only thing consistent in my life was inconsistency. I'm at a point where even though I know that in the future more film gigs will continue to give me a weird schedule sometimes, I need to focus on areas of my life where I can be a consistent person. This channel is a big step in that direction because of the upload schedule that I hold myself to. But in terms of the importance of consistency in life, I mean, as you already know, it's the only real way to get good at anything. It's all practice. Remember, if you just practice, anything can happen. But even though I know that, it's still difficult to be consistent. So I'm gonna go into three barriers that I face, maybe you face as well, when we're trying to be consistent and explore a possible solution to each one. So here we go, fellow inconsistent people or super consistent people just smugly laughing at us. Barrier number one to consistency is boredom. The prospect of doing the exact same thing at the exact same time every day can seem so boring. It reminds me of the beginning of so many 90s or early 2000s movies where the main character is doing the same thing every day and getting nowhere. I just stare at my desk, but it looks like I'm working. Until something or someone comes and shakes up their world and makes it better. Anything different is good. And we need variation. Studies show that novelty actually makes us happy and helps us retain new information. When I was a student, I enjoyed finding new places to study and I found that that helped me focus. And the research supports this. In a 1978 study in which one group studied a set of new vocabulary words in the same room twice, and the other group had their two study sessions once in one room and the second time in a different room, the group that studied in two different rooms performed far better on a test later on the vocabulary. One of the authors of the study explained this by saying, when the outside context is varied, the information is enriched and this slows down forgetting. So naturally, my possible solution to boredom and consistency is to change variables while keeping the important behavior consistent. It's exactly like studying in two separate rooms on different days because you're still doing the important behavior, studying. For a long time, I've wanted to meditate every morning after I wake up, which I still haven't done because I'm inconsistent. But the thought of meditating in a different room each morning and meditating on a different subject each morning makes it a lot more attractive to me because it wouldn't be boring. Something is changing. The second barrier to consistency that I want to talk about is fear of failure. This one's big, but it's also like this hidden insidious monster lurking in the shadows and I don't always know when it's affecting me. If I'm going to be consistent with something I want to know, then it's going to lead me down a path of success. I don't want to waste my time and I feel like if I fail, it will have been a waste of time. But this is the most annoying self-fulfilling prophecy. The fear of failure, in my experience, directly leads to failure. It's crazy. Also, if we analyze fear of failure a little deeper, there's a lot of self-doubt involved and a really unhealthy amount of pressure that we're putting on ourselves. I've found that I often feel so disappointed in myself because the standards that I set for myself are so high that it's almost like I'm failing all the time. You would think that might take away some of the fear of failure because I'm already failing, but somehow the fear is still there and it's paralyzing. Really it makes me feel like, well, if I never start, then I can never fail, so. <laughs> so my possible solution to fear of failure is trying to accept that it's a possible outcome and making peace with the risk. If we stop to think through what will really happen if we fail at this new thing, we might find that the risk of failing isn't such a big deal. What's the worst that could happen? Not the situations that your anxiety co cooks up, but the real worst that could happen. What do you risk? You know, you're not gonna starve. I don't know what, you know, what, are, they, what are they afraid of? They're, they're mostly afraid of uh, failure, I think, or... Yeah. But 
people should be, be less risk averse when there's not much at risk. Lastly, the third barrier to becoming consistent that I'm facing, maybe you're facing too, is lack of motivation. It's so hard to be consistent when my willingness to do something isn't. <laughs> One week something good will happen, like in my career, if I get a really great film gig and I feel like I'm making progress. And then when the phone stops ringing, as they used to say, my email inbox or texts are slow, my motivation disappears. When that happens, it feels like I'm missing some bit of proof that my efforts are worth something. But that means that I'm dependent on other people to tell me that I'm worthy. And that sucks. Letting the whims of the outside world influence when I'm motivated is like being a toy sailboat in a race battling changing winds. I'd rather be a toy motorboat. I'm sorry for this corny analogy, but it works. A motorboat has its own internal drive. The winds don't matter. So my possible solution to lack of motivation is to depend on our own inner resources. I got that phrase from a Buddhist talk that I'll share a clip of at the end of this video. In Buddhism, desire is at the root of suffering. The full weight of that statement might feel incongruent to modern life, but one thing that I take from it is that if I let, say, my desire for the outside world to motivate me and fuel me and give me everything, then it's an outside factor that's fabricating the experience of my life. And that's going to make me suffer because it's fleeting, it's inconsistent, and it's never going to satisfy me. On the other hand, if I only depend on my own ability to self-motivate and if I have the right intentions for what I want to do, it has the potential to be an unwavering resource and I don't have to depend on other people to make me happy. So there you have it. I hope you got something out of this. My plan is to take my own advice and keep learning consistency. And I'll definitely be updating you all in the future about it. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed, and I'll see you Tuesday. So here we are, sitting for an hour, thinking of yourself as cornered right here. You're going to stay in this position. And the difference between suffering right now and having a sense of ease and well-being right now is going to depend on your own inner resources, the way you fabricate your experience right now. You might say, necessity becomes the mother of invention. What are you going to do?